Let's uh, continue now uh, with the focus that we've had all through the day here on ENCA, and that is counting the cost of corruption. Now, one of the biggest corruption scandals in the country in recent times involves retail holding company Steinhoff, dubbed by some as the biggest corporate fraud. And, of course, while the health sector is trying to fight the COVID-19 pandemic, looters in South Africa saw an opportunity to enrich themselves. Over 2 billion rand worth of PPE tenders being probed in various provinces. And last month, a Mai King municipality official was the latest to be arrested in connection with the VBS Mutual Bank scandal that robbed so many pensioners of their pension. Our senior reporters Aisha Ismail, Desan Fathia and business anchor Ropiwa Madzena joining me now to discuss this. Ropiwa, I'm going to start with you and you of course have been looking into VBS. Do we have answers uh, of exactly where the money went and have we accounted and have, has everyone who's meant to account been brought to book? Well, some of them are starting to be brought to book, Sally. In fact, there's a trial that's set to take place uh, starting next week uh, for the eight accused who have been given bail. But just where did that money go? A report by advocate Terry Mudao uh, called it uh, the great bank heist for VBS. And he showed us there are 53 people and companies that were implicated in the looting of VBS. Some of the most prominent ones, which I chose to share with you this afternoon, was uh, the chairman of VBS at the time. His name was Chifua Matodzi and he pocketed 325 million rand. The investment firm that essentially started running VBS after 2016, that being Vela Investments, took the bulk share of the looting, 900 million rand. And then of course the CEO pocketed over 28 million rand and he was Andile Ramabunga. And then of course we did have government institutions that were involved in these criminal acts as well and they pocketed over 100 million million. So that's where we are right now. And also we are set to hear over the coming months, people are going to be getting back some of their monies. Uh, this is according to the liquidator who is working with those who were affected by the VBS scandal. All right. So that's where we are on VBS. Let's move to a massive accounting scandal. And that, of course, is with Steinhoff. Aisha, you've been tracking that one, pulling it all together for us. I understand there's been a bit of an update today with some possibility of a settlement between the PIC and Steinhoff, but that doesn't preclude authorities going after individuals. And of course, that brings us to Marcus Uester. What's the latest you can tell us? So, Sally, as you say, there have been two significant developments in the Steinhoff matter. So the first one, of course, is the one that you mentioned. The PIC released a statement earlier today saying that there is a proposed settlement on the table between the PIC and Steinhoff. Now, we don't know the details of that settlement. They're saying that only once all the um, legal processes have been um, concluded can they divulge the details of that settlement. And so we'll have to wait to hear at a later stage exactly what that um, proposed settlement agreement entails. And then, of course, in the Western Cape High Court, the judge ruled today that the court does indeed have the jurisdiction to hear a liquidation application against um, Steinhoff. Now, we know that um, a lot of companies invested in Steinhoff, and one of them being a company called Techie Town. They invested heavily in Steinhoff. And what happened there was, and, and hoping that they would make major profits, of course, they then suffered severe losses and their employees were left stranded and penniless. But I did speak to Kosatu's parliamentary coordinator, Matthew Parks, earlier today, and this is what he had to say. It had provided a useful paper trail to, to begin with, to look at what was done, who did it, etc. Um, it, it is a huge assistance as compared to many crimes where there is no... There's no report to go on. Um, this is a huge amount. The NPA has to be serious about it. It's not some small little petty crime where someone broke into a car. It's tw 20 billion rand that was lost from the government employee pension fund. It also had a devastating impact upon other funds invested in the stock markets, where Treasury estimated that about 200 billion rand was lost in share value across the stock market. And again, this should surely be a priority for the NPA. It was a national headlines in South Africa. Parliament repeatedly called the Hawks, the NPA, the Minister of Police to come and account and explain what they're doing. They called um, PwC, they called Steinhoff to come to Parliament. And yet still, four years later, nothing has been done.
Well, let's hope we see more action. Thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, let's move now to Durban. Desin Thathia, you've been keeping an eye on the PPE tender fraud. And this was just such a blight at a time when we were also vulnerable during COVID-19 and when the worst of this uh, came out. What have you learned today? Well, certainly it's shameful because if you think about the, the way that criminals capitalized on the extra funds that were made available to fight this pandemic, to keep healthcare workers safe, to keep the public safe, really. And uh, that's where they saw an opportunity to siphon funds. I mean, as you mentioned in your intro, more than 2.2 billion rand in PPE corruption that's being investigated. KwaZulu Natal is no different. We've had those scandals here in our education department, in the social development department, as well as other sectors. And I spent the day talking to both politicians and activists, and I think what they all agree on here really is that we need to start talking less about what's being done to those that are being caught, but to talk more about how can we prevent it in the first place and recoup some of that money that has really gone down the drain. Now, I spoke to unions as well, and Denosa in KwaZulu-Natal has made a suggestion, and one of the things that they are saying is, why is the system, or why had the system not been centralized to eliminate all of these unnecessary avenues, departments trying to procure uh, things like masks all on their own? And that, that they feel has opened the door for corruption. Let's listen in to Mantla Shabangu from Denosa. I chatted to him earlier. We are of the view that for this not to happen in the future, maybe there should be a, a, a new approach in centralization of uh, PPE so that it is stored in one center like supply chain at a provincial level and all institutions order from there than giving institution a leeway to order on their own because we feel that that is where the gap of corruption takes place. So we'll propose that in future the supply chain system should be intact that it observes that every institution that needs to be pro uh, given PPE, they get it through the one supplier, which is a supply chain at a provincial level, and avoid this thing of giving a, a, a permission to institution to procure, because that's where corruption takes place. Well, thanks very much to all of you. Important update on a corruption that was Desin Thathia in Durban, Aisha Ismail in Cape Town, and our business anchor here in Johannesburg, Ropiwa Madzenas.